literally just um, can't imagine driving anything else other than a Mini. And that loyalty and devotion to the Mini was typical of everyone there that day. Someone who had good cause to be attached to her Mini was Christelle Cleaver, who'd actually had it shipped here all the way from South Africa. And though at first sight her car looks like a hybrid of two different models, as we'll find out, in fact, it's nothing of the kind. Crystal, if I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at a Mini from the front and a Woolsey at the rear, and yet this calls itself a Mini Mark III. Tell us the story behind this car. It's a model that was never released in Britain. It was designed for the Australian market. And I believe that there are quite a number of them still over in Australia running around. And, and what year are we talking about? 1970, 71. This is actually the 71 um, version. Yeah. And I had her shipped over. And I've been over here 10 years, and she'll be, she'll be in her 20th year next year. But now you met with one that you encountered one or two problems at, at customs because they weren't quite taking your word for it that this was a genuine they were, mini, were they? They were beastly. <laughs> they accused me of cannibalizing the rear of her Hornet, Woolsey Hornet, and the front of the standard Mini Austin. And they impounded her, and this was on Christmas Eve, and I had to get verification from Leyland, and they'd shut up for the Christmas break. Of course. So I wasn't able to go down and collect her until January the 8th. And but so you got it out of South Africa, back into this country, and you've been living happily ever after. She's infallible. In 20 years, the head's never been off the engine. She has had no mechanical troubles. And only last year, she shed a shock absorber in the Warminster roundabout. But otherwise, she's been absolutely trouble-free. She's beautiful. Yes, she was a beauty, too. Well, I promised you a glimpse of some variations on the Mini theme, for it had the capacity to blossom into so many different shapes and forms. For the outdoor sporty type, there was always the Mini Moke, and for Leo Jacks, it was an irresistible challenge. It belonged to Pinewood Film Studios originally, and it was used on the Carry On films and the James Bond films. And I bought it with a wooden body on it, with the shape of a tank. And uh, I brought it back on a trailer, everybody was looking at it when I was coming down the motorway. And when I got it home, or back to my workshops, I stripped it right out to a, just a bare body shell. And we had it all sandblasted to clean all the brush paint off and the underseal and everything. And I restored it right back to as near original as possible. Uh, it's done uh, 6,000 miles from you then. It's done 10,000 there. But once you put in all the hard work, you've been able to sit back and see this being admired by people all over the That's country. That's right, yeah. A lot of people don't know, even know what they are, but... Uh... Well, tell us about the Mini Mo, because it was first of all featured in The Prisoner. Were That's you right. old enough to remember that series? Just about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, they made 1,467 for the home market, that was all. Not all, many, is no, it? No, no. Most of those are probably gone now. So um, they do suffer from the rust very bad, but this one, as it hadn't been used very much, you know, it was all right. So, uh, this would have particular appeal out in sunnier climes. That's right, it? yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, in very hot climates. So, how long did it take you to restore it? Um, probably about three months off and on. Yeah. And uh, I had to put a new hood on it and new seat cushions and things like that. But otherwise, I didn't have to spend a lot of money on it, really, to right. put it back. And what would you say it would be worth today? Um, probably about two and a half days. Meanwhile, away from the cars, the fate was in full swing, and thankfully the rain, which had threatened from time to time, never really materialized. The villagers had laid on some great sideshows, stalls and attractions, and, well, a village fate just wouldn't be the same without a coconut shy. Right, Whatever your age or appetite, there was something for everyone to get stuck into. And a tidy sum of money was raised that afternoon, some going towards the... Copied the world over, its virtues of economy, compactness, and panoramic visibility have never been bettered. And yet, curiously, although the car has sold well over five million, it has never made a penny profit for the manufacturers. Still, people will happily go to infinite trouble, all for the love of this little marvel. Mike Featham again. Mike, tell us what state you found this car in before you got to work on it. Well, this car belongs to a friend called Peter, and the whole back of the car was uh, broken off from the, from the floor. Mm -hmm. If you had lifted the roof, the back mountains, all the wheel arches, through the valance here, had broken away. And if you lifted the car up like so, the car 
broken too. And we uh, put a new side, all new subframe mountings, all the wheel arches repaired, new valances through, um, and actually put the back of the car back onto the body. Uh, took about two weeks. It wasn't a restoration job, it was just a, a job to get the car back so that it wasn't lost. Um, all the seams underneath the trims here were in fact two pieces and the whole car was broken along the entire seam of the car right round the back so the back of the car was coming off the subframe a bit messy but being a mini cooper well worth saving of course you, you can't let a car die um, that's part of my trouble you, you, you see the cars and um, at the end of the day you think can't let this one go we must do it and when you get involved there's lots and lots of work Someone else had her work cut out as well. Annie St. John, picking out the winning raffle ticket. Annie, Annie, that's right, that's lovely. Annie, yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is the winner of two weeks holiday in Florida. I've just been. And I'm pleased to announce, it's a great hush now, pleased to announce it goes to Lee West. Hey! <laughs> Which was more than we could promise on that day, but a brand new Mini was yours for the taking if you could only throw seven sixes from a cupful of dice. A tall order? Well, let's say no one managed it on the day. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dr. Moulton was showing off his Mini. Uh, this is your car, isn't this it? Is my, my personal car, I've just unearthed it, really. Uh, really, to, to celebrate the, the 30th uh, anniversary. And the joy, in having it you know, restored and so on, the joy of getting back into it. And I, I've driven this thing, or been driven in it, 97,000 miles. Mm. And I remember it all come back to me. I remember I had a Dino at the time, a Dino Ferrari at the time, talking about the early 70s, and I, which I used to, to, to drive quite a bit. And then somehow I find myself always using, for a journey at least up to 100 miles, this thing, this special little Mini, because it's such a little charmer and so personal. and just like a little thing you put on. And it's got some, I mean, obviously it's got my hydrogas suspension on, interconnected front to rear. Uh, obviously it's got that splendid man, um, Daniel Richmond, now no longer with us. Engine tune, it's a 1300. It's got a very high gear, and the performance is very good. But I had some other special uh, features, which uh, are in the seating of the car. What makes you able to stand up I right there? Look, it is perfectly ridiculous standing like this, but the reason is that there isn't a seat here. Oh, That's I why see. I can stand up, which I could, I could perhaps show you. But you've got a seat in the back, yes. I see. Let's well, let me... <laughs> now, I'm going into the back seat now. Right. And <clears throat> I'm, I'll sit right back for a second like that. And so... When would is, this come into its well, own, this when, particular seat? Well, literally, being a driven. I had a chauffeur there, and um, I was, it was driven in it, because at that particular time, we were on a very bad petrol uh, rationing point of view, so when, when I used it as a chauffeur-driven car. I, that, I don't mean to say that was all the time, but that was the purpose of this. And then there is, in fact, a little seat here, which I can show you, which this little foot still there you remove, and then if one were, for instance, going to London, and um, were taking somebody out to lunch, having driven up from the country, and then I would just sit here like that, pop there, so that made a little occasional seat, uh, just for a tiniest journey, and then then going home, driven, that was closed down like that, that put away there, and that pushed down like that, and then a little foot